Hello, everybody, or actually I should say, hello, everybody. It's me, Mr. Proft, coming to you from my guest bedroom here in beautiful, sunny Santa Monica, California. Oh, this thing, by the way, behind me here, that's uh, something my youngest son did when he was in kindergarten. Uh, it's actually all the letters. Um, each one of those pictures represents uh, a letter of the alphabet the Spanish alphabet, um, because both my kids, fun fact, um, went to something called Spanish Immersion School. So my kids went to a school where the teachers only spoke Spanish to them, um, which as a result means they can speak Spanish and I can't. So I wish, uh, wish my parents had done that with me um, when I was a kid. But uh, so like that first thing right there, that's A for abeja. Then I think B is the Spanish word for, for whale, which I can't remember what that is. Um, then C is crab. Z. Some of those cool things like the Z uh, there at the bottom. The Zeta is Zora, which is a little, little, little picture of a fox that he made. Anyway, what does this have to do with what we're talking about? Really nothing. I just saw that uh, over my shoulder and just thought I'd mention it. So what we're going to do today is not so much talk about the Spanish alphabet. We're going to talk about a story, which I'm going to read to you in English. And uh, at the end of the story, I'm going to ask you some questions about what was in the story. So it's going to be very important that you listen closely so that you can remember those key details uh, as, I'm, as I'm reading to you. The story, uh, I wasn't able to print it out, so it's actually on my computer. So if you see me looking down, that's because I'm looking at the story on my computer. And then at the end, after we've done that, after I've read the story and after we've had a chance to go over some key details, <clears throat> we are gonna practice with our sight words, our scoop words, okay? So this story is called Chip Can't Nap. Chip Can't Nap. Chip, you remember, is a character we've seen before. He's a cat. So um, what do you think's gonna happen in the story? What do you think the story Chip Can't Nap is about? Well, I bet you our friend Chip is trying to find a place to take a nap. Let's, let's see if you and I are right about that prediction. So, uh, every afternoon, Chip starts to yawn. When this happens, he knows that it's time for his cat nap. Lately, he's been sleeping in the alley behind the donut shop. He starts to curl up inside of a hat that he uses as a bed when he hears a huge thud and then a bash. What was that? He thinks as he looks up to investigate. It is the trash can. A worker from the donut shop has thrown a big stinky bag of trash into the can and then slammed the top back on. Okay, now I can nap, Chip thinks as he closes his eyes. But then, he hears a horn honking. He gets up and looks around the corner down to the street. A truck is blocking the street, so a taxi cab and many other cars are honking their horns. Ugh, says Chip. Will I ever get to nap? Chip is one cranky kitty when he does not get his rest. He is so tired he can barely think, but then he has an idea. Sometimes a window of the donut shop delivery van is open. Maybe he can slip in and nap in one of the comfy seats. He walks over to the van, but is disappointed to see that the windows are shut tight. Will I ever get some peace and quiet so I can tab my nap today, he thinks. He is getting more cranky. Then he has one more idea. Pat's house. There is a little girl in the neighborhood named Patricia, Pat for short. She lives with her brother James and their grandma. Pat sometimes leaves scraps of food out on the porch for Chip. If he goes over there, maybe he will get a nap and a snack too. Chip hurries over to Pat's house and quickly curls up in their small front yard. When he wakes up, there is a bowl of milk waiting for him on the front step. Chip, 
Chip lip, blah, 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 blah. Chip licks up every last drop of milk. He's not a cranky kitty anymore. Now he's a happy kitty. Oh, there you go. So here are those comprehension questions. So hopefully you were paying attention. All right. My first question, where does Chip try to nap first? Where is the first place that Chip tries to take a nap? Did you, did you have a chance to tell you learn anybody? Okay. It's in the hat that he uses for a bed, right? He tries to take a little nap in the hat. Where does Chip finally get to take his nap? Remember, he couldn't nap in the alley because it was noisy and he tried some other places. Where does he finally find a place where he can take a nap? It's in Pat or Patricia's front yard, right? That's where he ends up over there. He tries to sleep in the van. He tries to uh, some other places, but ultimately that's where he, he is able to nap. So what does the author mean? The author is the person who wrote the story. What does the person who wrote the story mean when they say Chip is one cranky kitty? What do you think the word cranky means? Cranky means they're in a bad mood. I mean, sometimes people, particularly babies, I guess, can be cranky or in a bad mood if they don't get enough sleep or enough food. Uh, what is an alley? In the story, uh, it talked about Chip sleeping in the alley behind uh, the donut shop. What is, what's an alley? An alley is, is a, a place behind a building. Usually it's a thin little street uh, where garbage trucks or delivery people can go up and down, but that's an alley. It's a little, a little, space, little space behind a building. All right, last question, here we go. Uh, how does Chip change from the beginning of the story to the end? In other words, in the beginning of the story, Chip is one way, and at the end he changes to something else. So what changes? Well, in the beginning of the story, he's sleepy and cranky. And then at the end of the story, he wakes up and he's well rested and he's happy. So that was the change that goes on. He starts cranky and unhappy and he ends up not cranky and happy. All right, so there you go. Look at that, we just read a story, we talked about it, we answered some questions. We're doing fantastic. So let's do one more super fantastic thing before we go. Let's go through. I'm going to shuffle my deck of scoop words, my deck of sight words. Hopefully, you and your learning buddy have sat down and you have put together some of these flashcards. It's very important that we get to know all these scoop words really well. So let's just start off with R with Will, was, see, his, is, has, by, be, it, a, the, he, you, for, or, can, she, up, like, do, to, I. All right, there we go. We read a story, we answered some comprehension questions, we practiced our scoop word. We did a lot of work in a very short time. Thank you for your attention and keep moving forward.